excited. This is our first core, and uh, we're hoping it's a good location to give us some good information about the, the timing of this big expansion that we can see from other data. We should be getting the core on deck in a few minutes, and we've got everybody on standby ready to um, collect the core and bring it indoors and see what we got. Yes, it is our first call. But all that's going through my mind right now is that I can't feel my fingers. So, sorry. <laughs> that takes precedence. This is a tricky operation because you want to keep the sediment core intact as much as possible usually, uh, depending on what you're doing with the sediment. So they'll lay it out carefully and then we'll try and uh, take the section away intact if we can. We're getting the mud off of this um, piston core and uh, it just we just pulled it up from the bottom and it, uh, we drilled about uh, 30, 30 feet worth of sediment. We're going to try and jiggle this off. Literally jiggle. Oh my gosh, this is so heavy. We're trying to wiggle the core loose from the thing that cored it, basically. Come on, the only one holding us. <laughs> no, this is like the worst game of tug of war I've ever played. Okay. Come on, let's get muddy together. You know, we've been working for over 12 hours from 1am today and this is our fourth core and there hasn't been a single complaint. Even though, I mean, it's muddy, it's cold outside. We're getting a lot of data in, uh, in an area where we do have some interest. We did not intend to get this much data in this area, but it just turns out that uh, this is where we had a, a lot of open water. It's like this all the time in Antarctica. You end up getting uh, data where you can. We're gonna, we're gonna take a transect back towards station three and uh, on the way we're gonna be trying to spot some uh, core sites. Uh, we're gonna take a jumbo on uh, probably station three which is the, the furthest one away. It might be like uh, seven miles and uh, we want to get eight um, eight barrels for that site, okay? Uh, copy that, eight barrels. Hello? Hey mom. We're trying to set up for the jumbo piston core and that's like we're gonna try and get 80 feet. So that's gonna be really exciting, yeah. So we had very good luck coring a similar site where we got 28 feet and uh, we know the unit that we cored into is as much as 60 and uh, we're hoping to get all the way through that unit and into the underlying sediment and we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed that it all works out according to plan. Whoa, we sent down a jumbo core and as it went down it must have hit something really hard. The jumbo core was bent. Hopefully we have something. We're not really sure. It might not have picked up anything because the sediment may have been too hard. But we're hoping that we, we're thinking positive and we're hoping that we have something. Yeah. I'm depressed. Because, uh, well, we were hoping to get at least 30 feet because we saw something on uh, one of the recorders that were indicating there was an important transition at that depth. So each one of these segments is 10 feet long and you can see where the bend is. It's right in the between 20 and 30. So I don't think we got down far enough to get to that interval we were trying to sample. But we have more barrel, uh, so we're just gonna lick our wounds and uh, go try to identify another site where we can try to get it. We'll just see what happens. Down again. Yeah, there you go. That's it, stop. Oh, oh, oh. Down there. The 80 foot 
core is really good because each glacial period leaves its own mark on the sea floor and using a jumbo core you can find out how those two sediment layers are related so instead of sampling them in two different places you can see how they meet and how they come together and that can help you date the difference between the two much more cleanly and also tell what sort of conditions existed when one uh, glacier advanced over the other. Unfortunately this is the second time we've tried it, this is the second time we've bent the core head. Probably what's happening is, is that currents deep uh, in the Ross Sea are pulling the coring tube that we can see here at an angle. And because it's got a big weight at the top that drives it into the sediment, if it's coming at an angle and that weight isn't centered just above the rest of the tube, it can bend it and then as it comes in that extra weight bends the tube. So this has been uh, really bad for us, not just because we don't get the full sediment core, so we don't see all the sediment we want to see, but because we're only here for a really short period of time when you uh, add it up, only a few days uh, for coring for each of these legs, um, this really sets us back, it really stops us from getting all the samples we want. Might be able to get about that much data with, uh, if we go back to, uh, to multi-beam now. We're going to have to leave in less than 48 hours, so I've kind of put together a little chart kind of showing uh, the amount of distance we could cover in an hour. Two hours of travel time at 10 knots, we can cover 37 kilometers. So this is a really important patch here. So that'll give us at least this edge, get a lot more coverage on here. It's such a big area, we're really gonna have to uh, get the community behind trying to do this sort of effort. We'll see what happens. 24, 48 more hours, and uh, hopefully we have a, a nice data set in hand at that time. If you hear that, that's the crushing of the ice right now. And it's just something you don't see every day, and I don't think I could ever get used to this. Oh, look at some more wheels. Well, I'm a geologist and uh, my specialty is rivers of ice, but uh, there's something really magical about the animals. I really wanted to come because I felt like this was a lifetime experience. I know that a lot of people don't have the opportunity or the means to come to Antarctica, and so I knew that it would open my eyes to a lot of things. and. It's just incredible because you can never see this anywhere else and I think that was the main reason to help connect me with global warming and what the processes are in Antarctica and how it can change everyone in the world. I think I've seen everything that I've, I wanted to see when um, before I came down here so it's far surpassed any expectation I had before. Also, the science was good. I think we made a progress. We had problems with the cores. It's uh, really interesting what's going on down here. It's uh, really different from a lot of other places. The ice sheets are so big, they make such a different impact on the environment than almost anywhere else on Earth. 